So we pick up the next study, number five, of St. Nicholas. The most famous member of the New York His Historical Society was Pinton. And we've just studied Pinton and started picking him up. John Pinton, I believe his name is. Yes. And that's in lesson number four. The most famous of the New York Historical Society was Pinton's cousin, Washington Irving, who had made much of St. Nicholas. So we see a man-made evolution. St. Nicholas has already in his life tried to steal stories about Jesus Christ for himself. We saw that while he was alive. After he's dead, he's become this great saint by his church he has his own day he has his own service he has his own cathedral he has his own relic <clears throat> now we're in the 1800s we're in america and now we see saint nicholas is going to transform himself i use that word very carefully transform himself into Santa Claus so it's going to be no bizarre fact to see that a guy who's imitated Jesus Christ is now going to become a worldwide figure and an Antichrist who had made much of Saint Nicholas in his 1809 book Knickerbocker's History of New York here it again what did Nicholas have to do with New York? Even if he knew there was a New York. But here he comes again. Up from the grave. I hate to say it, but here comes Nicholas. It's supposed to be Jesus. You have artificially resurrected a dead man. I mean, doesn't he come around every December 24th, 25th? He's in the grave with his relic, which was actually published on St. Nicholas Day. Pintard had visually inter previously introduced St. Nicholas as a symbolic patron. We, we talked about that and gave you a definition. Saint of the Historical Society. So the guy that is of children, of sailors, of thieves, of criminals who have been unjustly criminalized by the government now has become the saint of the historical society in New York which held annual dinners on December 6 St. Nicholas Day and this is a holiday that's a reversal of birthday because he's he's dead he can't have a birthday and if he's dead it's the celebration of death that's a Halloween for Santa Look how we got the devil's time in. Let's see. I don't want to go too far back. Uh, patron. Uh, you can go back and find a video or audio about the patron. For the Historical Society of St. Nicholas Day Dinner in 1810, <clears throat> John Pintard ordered the publication of a broadside having a picture of St. Nicholas in the form of a rather stern superior bishop mr nicholas there he is i ain't finished it's a comma bringing gifts for good children and punishment for bad ones so your santa claus that brings good gifts to good children and coals that's what i was told when i was a child to the bad children has a foundation in the New York Historical Society, Washington Irving and John Pinter. That's where the foundation is of this one guy, St. Nicholas. Now, like I said, in 1809, 1810, Mr. Nicholas has can't say nothing, can't do nothing. He's in a tomb. He's dead. Why would they pick this guy? You imagine what can you think of what religion these two men would be of so far of, of four studies onto the fifth now? 
If Mr. Pintard knew the Bible as he was the founder of the American Bible Society, we learned last week, he would have known that Jesus Christ is the true gift, but he didn't know that. And I think we already talked, I think we gave his religion. Didn't we? Uh, <clears throat> he was a vestry man for the Huguenot Church of New York. And he's associated with the General Theology Society, the American Bible Society, and the New York Historical Society. And he comes from, and from him comes Santa Claus. Do you know who wrote Twas the Night Before Christmas? Do you know the occupation of that man that wrote that for his children? Twas the Night Before Christmas? Would you believe he was a, a minister of the Bible? Do you see now Santa Claus has now come in, or has been, in the churches through the Roman Catholic Church? Mr. Nicholas was a bishop in the Roman Catholic Church. He's become this relic. He's become this, uh, let's look at this one man. Let's make pictures of him. <coughs> let's worship him. He would have known that Jesus Christ is the true gift. The gift of and from God. Romans 6.23 The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ephesians 2 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. <clears throat> so is it acceptable for parents, Christian parents, to have another person discipline their children? No. But you're giving, the, you're giving them an idea that someone else is a gift. Someone else is a gift, gift bearer. In the Bible, the gift is Jesus Christ. So who gave us that gift? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And if Santa Claus is going to give gifts to good children and to bad children, Santa Claus takes on God the Father. Remember he said he wanted him to be the four, rather stern superior bishop well here is satan the imitation of god the father which matches the pope the victor of christ mr nicholas being dead let me say that again this santa claus now transformed from saint nicholas has now become the antichrist through New York City. That's a great religious center for worship. Puke hole. <clears throat> and then you remember Secret Santa? Remember we talked about that? In churches? Good children and bad children. Hebrews 12, 7 and 8. If ye endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is he whom the father chastens not? Nah. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. Even God doesn't punish Satan's children. Who or what judgment does Santa Claus judge good and bad children now? People come up to me on the street, I'm preaching. Judge not, least ye be judged. Well, who is Santa judging? And what gives him the right to say this child's bad and that child's good? Listen, I grew up with this mess in my house. Santa Claus. Too styly from Santa Claus. And all oh, year, Santa's watching you. You'd rather be good or bad. If you're going to be a bad little boy, you're going to get cold. That's what I grew up with. What's he doing watching me? Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the good and the evil. You see, Santa Claus is now taking on God. He sees the good and the evil. His eyes are everywhere. This is a mess. Two weeks later, and seemingly in reaction to Pintar's broadside, a New York newspaper printed a poem about St. Nicholas. Clement C. Moore, 
a member of Pintard's church. Now you see religion coming in. Clement Moore joined the New York Historic Society in 1813. Now, if you're if you're a Christian, 18 six plus six plus six, 13. There's no good condemnation, very little. <clears throat> And in 1820, wrote now the famous, A Visit from St. Nicholas, or Twas the Night Before Christmas. So the pictures, the story, the Twas the Night Before Christmas. Santa has come from the New York Society, from a church. Where a guy is a vestry of, look at that, look at the religion, look at Satan at work in Santa Claus. He just misspelled his name, Satan Claus. <clears throat> in eight, 1809, Washington Irving, the history of New York, referred to St. Nicholas as the patron saint of New York, another good one name. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back now. After saying that, I'm gonna go back and find, tell you back here. I hope I patriot saint. This is Saint Nicholas. Children, mariners, bankers, pawnbrokers, scholars, orphans, laborers, travelers, merchants, judges, paupers, the marriageable, maidens, students, children, sailors. Victims of judicial mistakes, captives, performers, even thieves and murderers. Now the New York Historical Society and now New York. Murderers and thieves? That goes great with New York. I want to make him the patron saint of Washington, D.C., Capitol Hill. The Roman Catholic Church saint now has perverted the Bible and the life of Jesus Christ. A Christian nation. Who's the patron saint of New York? St. Nicholas. Ho, ho, ho. Irving succeeded global fame for his fictional liar work. Fictional means lie. This is a nice, pretty name, like shacking up, living together. They're just having an affair. It's a lie. Irving succeeded global fame for his lying work, including the stories of Rick Van Winkle and the legend of Sleepy Hall, fairy tales, lies, fiction. You know, the guy who lost his hat and, hat and a ghost would come around and give him a pumpkin? Ah, uh, man, that comes right back. Did we say up here at Halloween? As well as for his biographies and historical writing. He first became more widely known for his comic work. A History of New York, 1809, written under the name of <clears throat> Dirich, capital D-I-E-D-R-I-C-H, Knickerbocker. A lampoon and full interlacing of fact and fiction his historic his history of new york from the beginning of the world to the end of the dutch dynasty is narrated by dirich knickerbocker and one R. irving much praised at home and aboard now i'm a little <coughs> trouble with my throat now what you say i apologize so this guy, Washington Irving, that comes up with St. Nicholas as Santa Claus, he's a liar. He writes lies. Oh, he throws a good, good couple things in there, you know, history. But he already said that the history of New York from the beginning of the world? Wait a minute. In the beginning, I read that there was a garden in Eden. I don't read about New York. New York is a very, very new thing compared to the beginning of the world. <clears throat> Again, forgive me. It was his belief, Irving, 
furthermore, that this religion, this is him saying, I am quoting, so elevated and simple, he repeatedly became been corrupted and disbased by men, and especially outraged by idolatry. Wherefore, a succession of prophets, each inspired by a revelation from the Most High, had been sent from time to time and at distant periods to restore it to its original purity. Such was Noah, such was Abraham, such was Moses, such was Jesus Christ. By each of these, the true religion had been reinstated upon earth, but had again been visited by their followers. The faith as taught by practice by Abraham when he came up out of the land of Chaldea seems especially to have <clears throat> formed a religious standard in his mind. From his v veneration from the patriarch as the father of Ishmael, the product, progenitor, you can never say that word, of his race. Washington Irving, Washington Irving's life of Mohammed. I just read to you a quote from Washington Irving quoting the life of Muhammad. Where his followers are giving in murder activity in 2016. And he has in here Abraham, Jesus Christ, the apostles, Moses. Moses didn't come from Ishmael. You liar! I hope you can hear me in hell, brother. You're a liar. Christians, you've got if you've got your children following this this Santa Claus, you are following a liar. John 8 44, shame on you. Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, not Santa Claus's lap. This makes me mad. That's why I'm doing it on video to wake you up. Your pastor won't wake you up. The story came from pastors. What's that idiot's name? Clement Moore. Wrote, Twas the Night Before Christmas. For his little girls. Why don't you just read them the, the nativity story in the, in the Gospel of Luke? Or Matthew. Oh, no, let's not reopen the Bible. <clears throat> Mr. Washington writes a realm of religious and imaginary plots. In the imaginary was St. Nicholas, patron saint of New York. Imaginary. Disney. 1840s. There we go. Christmas shopping advertisements featured the image. There's that word. There's a, images of Santa Claus. So now the picture of Santa Claus comes up in the 1840s. Galatians 5 9, a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. Exodus 20, verse 4, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath. Mr. Nicholas is in the earth beneath, he's in a coffin. Or that is in the water under the earth. Leviticus 26 1, you shall make no idols nor graven image, neither rear up. A standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Standing image, it'll be a standing image of Santa Claus. Romans 1 23, and change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man. Santa Claus is, looks like a corruptible man, a man of sin. And the birds, and the four footed beasts, and creepy things. Revelation 13 15. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Got the image? Numbers 33, 52. <clears throat> then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures. New York Historical Society. And destroy all their molten images and quite pluck down all their high places. Doesn't Santa Claus sit on a high place in the malls or stores. Welcome to the North Pole. North is a high place. Who has had no bird? It's on top of the world. 1841. <clears throat> My voice. Thousands. 
thousands. Children visit the life-size Santa in a, in a Philadelphian shop. Let me say something. Revelation 3, 7 through 13. And unto the church, the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, no man and shutteth, no man openeth, I know thy works. Behold, I set before thee an open door, no man can shut it, for thou hast little strength, and hast kept my word, hast not den denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I have also kept thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, and to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Behold, hold fast that which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, <clears throat> and he shall go no more out. I will write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. I will write upon him my new name. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. That is the, that is the passage to the church age of the church of Philadelphia. And it's interesting what words come out that works in with Santa Claus. No man shutteth. You shut your doors at night and Mr. Santa Claus come through. Even though the door is locked. The synagogue of Satan shows up. Worship before thy feet. Children will come up to the feet of to Santa Claus. I want to say Jesus. But, uh, come upon all the world. All the world knows this one guy. Santa. Behold I come quickly. Santa does his whole entire route. In one single night. Hold fast. Stay in bed. Don't get up. Don't go peeking. Then Santa will leave and leave you gifts under the tree. This guy is very dangerous to get children in. I'm not writing to unsaved people. I'm writing to saved people. To be a child of God and to be messed up in this satanic. And it comes out of churches. St. Nicholas was a bishop. Santa Claus, 1800s, comes out of a New York church. <clears throat> Soon was to follow a live Santa. And if you didn't know, Revelation 13, 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. In 1841, thousands of children came to see a life-size Santa. He wasn't a living Santa. He was just a life-size Santa. Now we got a life Santa. So we're going from cardboard or, or photo something paper to now we got the real thing. <clears throat> <clears throat> We're not done. 1890s. Salvation Army. You do know the history of Salvation Army. Because those dingalingers in, in, out in the stores around Christmas time, they don't know anything about the Salvation Army. Salvation Army, 1890s, needed more money. Began to dress unemployed men in Santa suits into the streets of, guess it, come on, Eric, ready? Come on, say it, New York. <clears throat> wow. Do you see the religion behind this? 
Do you know what the salvation was by William Booth? It was to go out in the streets and get lost people saved for Jesus Christ. They were bummed. No one wanted them. The Church of England told Mr. De Booth, we don't want those people here. Get out of here. And he went and started his own church and was witnessing the loss and, and, and people who were sickly, people who were rejected by the world, people who were just scum of the earth. And he brought to them Jesus, saving grace of Jesus. And he would grab a, a man with a drum and with a, with a horn. And he would blow marching down the street to get people coming to come hear him preach Jesus. And now they're dressing unemployed people in Santa. Ding, 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 ding. Excuse me, sir. Yes. I don't mean to, I mean, don't mean to stop your dinging. What's salvation? Yes, my wife and my, my daughter. I don't know. What what army? What what army are you fighting? Who, who are we gonna go to war with? I don't, I'm just here to collect money. Uh, you know who Claire and William Booth is? No, I don't think they're in our congregation. I hope not. I got a track over here. I, I can, we're almost getting up to Christmas time. I'm gonna have to see if I can get it. It's all about the Salvation Army. <clears throat> So what does St. Nick or Santa Claus have to do with someone's soul or salvation? It said up here. Where was it? Oh, where did I read that? Where did I read that? Alright, this is what I read. Uh, John Payne ordered the publication broadside having a picture of St. Nicholas and from the blah, blah, blah. Bringing gifts of good, for good children and punishment for bad ones. There's the salvation. But it's not the gift of Jesus Christ. It's a little doll that can wee wee her, her underwear or a little toy pistol that a child can go shoot the birds in the backyard or something and now you got the south now listen the salvation army they're, they're followed up they were once evangelistic of the gospel of jesus christ Do you know in norwich connecticut i had the Salvation Army three times had uh, hired a goon squad to keep us from witnessing to children coming off the school bus into their building. You remember that, guys? I got it on videos. I got it on Facebook. You trying to stop us from preaching the gospel and giving gospel tracts out to children in the winter. Booth soon realized he had found his destiny. In the latter, in 1865, he and his wife, Catherine, opened up the Christian Revival Society in the East End of London, where they held meetings every evening and on Sundays to share the repentance that salvation can bring through the accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior to the poorest and to the most needy, including alcoholics, criminals, and po Oh, criminals. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What did I say over here? Patriot saint children, mariners, bankers, pawnbrokers, scholars, orphans, laborers, travelers, merchants, judges, paupers, paupers, marriageables, maidens, students, children, sailors, victims of just judicial mistakes, captives, performers, even thieves and murderers. Criminals and prostitutes. That's who the people that the booths went to to tell about Jesus Christ. The Christian Revival Society was later renamed the Christian Mission. And as of the 1890s, they had people dressed up as Santa Claus. Claire and William Booth wouldn't accept anything in the Roman Catholic Church, but in the 1890s they will. To get money. And only money. And they don't hear you, they don't hand you a gospel track ready. They don't tell you how to get saved because they don't even know themselves. Ding 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 ding. You know why they ring the ding 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 ding? Because you're a ding 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 for giving them money. Christian. Talking to Christians. You ain't know where that money's going. Okay. I think it's supposed to be other names. Older names. Alright, other names. 
This is going to be hard. Christ kind. That's Christ with kind, K I N D, or Chris Kringle with K's. In Swiss and German, Christ child. <laughs> Do I? Do I have to go further? Uh, German, Swiss, and German. The Christ child, the anointed child. There's only one anointed. That's the child. And that's Jesus Christ. But there's another anointed. Ezekiel twenty-eight. Sturders, can I have a bark bag? Yeah. The name Chris Kringle with, with K is a mispronunciation of the German name. The actual German figure is called Christkind. Christ to Kitchen or Christ Kendall. He's got three names Trinity. Christ Kind, Christ Kitchen. Christ kind. Ill. I can't pronounce German, so forgive me. And it's derived from an early Christ kind, though, which was introduced by Martin Luther. Santa Claus is religious. And all of Germany names mean Christ child. They originally referred to the newborn Jesus. Thank you, Martin Luther. Thank you, Lutheran Church. Now we have the Antichrist. Acts 11.26. You knew I was going to get the Bible. And when he had found him, he brought him into Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. That, by the way, that wasn't a good name. That was an insult. You're Christ followers. You like him. Yeah. You don't want to be one of them Christians. Ooh. Yeah, I know a guy. He's a Christian. Ooh. Today, the media has the wrong title, Christian given to the wrong church. You're going to call that Roman assembly what they are called? Satan! They don't know what the meaning of Christian is. The reason is they were imitated of the life of Jesus Christ. Now, for us, when Antioch called them Christians, it would be a badge of honor. I, I am living like Christ. But for Antioch, the people there, it was an insult. When, when did Jesus work with elves? When did he ever get married? And forget that nonsense with uh, Mary Magdalene and all that. And came from the North Pole. With reindeer. And gifts to give to... Oh, wait a minute. Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That gift came from God, not Jesus. Jesus was the gift. And he wasn't under the tree. He was nailed to the tree. There you go. Mother, father, next Christmas, this year, do the, take those presents and nail them to the tree. Oh, I probably started something. Oh, Lord. Oh, no. I, I can just see it now. Lord Terry's another thousand years. Why do you name? Why do you nail your presence to the tree? Well, some guy told me to. It was in the Bible. Ephesians two eight. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So if God's given a gift, Jesus Christ, and Santa's given a gift, what does that make Santa? Now, Acts twenty twenty eight says and if you go look it up give it to you it says that god's blood was my payment and if jesus shed his blood on the cross according to acts 20 28 who is jesus he's god so here's a gift giver giving kids gifts whether they're good or bad 
and he's called the Christ child. So you got the one that's given the gift, God, and the gift is Christ. They're one. Now do you see you're getting in, and his, he's got to be a spirit Christmas night, because how do you get one man going from house to house all over the world? It's got to be a spirit. So now you got the unholy trinity. Jesus did not come from the north. He gives the gift of salvation, the gift of God. No nine deer. You ever know that? Nine deer. But nine fruits of the spirit. Santa, just like Mr. Nicholas, is an imitation, fabricated one of that of Jesus Christ. I believe we will call it the Antichrist. 1 John 2, 18. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that the Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists all over the malls. Whereby we know that it is a lot. Why would John start that off with little children? The figure is distinct in origin and tradition. There's that word again. From Santa Claus and Father Christmas. Call no man your father upon the earth. The Christ kind. Christ child is the traditional Christmas gift bearer in southern Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Sudtirol, S-U-D-T-I-R-O-L, and I'm just going to spell it L-I-E-C-H-T-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. You know where you live. Since the 1990s, the Christ kind is facing increasing competition in Germany from the Weisheshemen, Capital W E I H N A C H T S M A N N in the American version of Santa Claus. So now we got a war between Germany and America again. The Santa Claus. The Christ kind is a elf like child, usually depicted with blonde hair. You read those animals that come out of the pit in Revelation? And. <coughs> angelic wings. I didn't know angels had wings. Unless you buy toilet paper. Martin Luther intended it to be a reference to the incarnation of Jesus Christ as an infant. You see, he, he, he tried to clean the church, but he never left the church. Martin Luther started as Christ kind crystal key potato, potato chip something luke 24 39 behold my hands and my feet that is i handle me and see for a spirit has not flesh and bones as ye see me have christ came in the world all men and all men that was nothing christ came into the world and all god and all man there was nothing spiritual about his first event blonde hair John 1 11 he came unto his own his own received him not second Timothy 2 8 remember that Jesus Christ the son of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel Romans 1 3 concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord which was made the seed of David according to the flesh Jews have dark black hair not blonde you forget that Jesus was Jewish he wasn't a Hollywood actor there was no Hollywood um we got that angelic wings not one angel in the bible has wings zechariah 5 5 through 11. then the angel that talked with me went forth and said to me lift up now thine eyes and see what is this that goes forth and i said what is it he said it's an ephod that goes forth he said moreover this is their resemblance to all the earth and behold there was lifted up a town of lead and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephod he said this is wickedness the woman and he cast it in, in the midst of the ephod 
and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, there came two women in the wind of their wings. For they had wings like the wings of a stork. There it is. Stork that brings the baby. And they lifted up the... You don't need abortion. Get yourself a gun and start shooting the storks out of the air. Then you won't get your baby. And lifted up the ephod between the earth and the heaven. And said unto the angel to talk to me, What to do these bear the ephod? And he said unto me, to build a house in the land of Shinar. You know what Shinar is? Why don't you go ask our troops where Shinar is. And it shall be established and set it upon our own base. Those women are surely not of the holy God and righteousness. And the city of Shinar, Babylon, Iraq, maybe they got blonde hair. But no angels in the Bible as such. No angels are females. Santa Claus is a cross dresser. I think we'll leave. I think we'll we'll end with the transgender of Santa Claus, and he wouldn't know which bathroom to use unless he went to Target. Why did I have to say that? Santa Claus is a cross dresser. In Spanish, San me is male. San means male. Santa Ana, Santa Barbara are female. S-A-N-T-A is female Spanish. Then he must be Agronius Hermaphrodite, both female and male. Hermaphrodite. Yeah, they got big words. He's a freak. And I'm not saying to the people who are born like this. I'm talking about Santa Claus himself. I'm making fun of Santa Claus. Not no, uh, you know, human that has, has, has had a problem. There are frogs somewhere in the world that can be both sexes. Frogs. Frogs. Exodus 8, 6. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt. And the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Santa covers... Egypt <laughs> doesn't he type of the word in the Bible the Antichrist and Satan yes I said Satan not Santa because they are both the same Revelation 16 13 and I saw the three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet I think that'd be a good stop right there to leave <clears throat> Now, if you're unsaved, you, you just think I'm a fruitcake, and you probably listen to this just for a laugh. But this is not for you. This is for the Bible-believing Christian who goes to a Baptist church, who have children. And, is it okay to have Santa Claus? What's your answer now? And you know how you know how bad this is going to be. If you say, you know what, Brother Stanley, you're right. This year at Christmas, we're, we're, we're pulling Santa out of our house. We're going to have the tree. But, but, but Santa Claus, we're, we're, that's it. We're, we're not going to have him. You wait to number six. You come back next week, Lord willing. Well, when I, well next, for me, it'd be next week, Lord willing. You can hear these whenever I do them up. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen the first time you pull Santa out of your house. I've had this happen. You're doing what with your children? You're not going to give them Santa? You're just a wicked parent. Hey, can I bring my grandchildren to go see Santa Claus at the mall? Mom, we don't have Santa in this house. What? I brought you up on Santa Claus. You call me a rotten parent? It's an expression used by preachers in Baptist churches that do right. You're going to kick Santa. And Santa's not going to feel nothing. But his worshipers will. And if you ever want to get anybody mad, and if you ever want to defamily somebody, just kick Santa. 
I'll tell you something else. These videos right here that I'm doing to help you, some of you are like, yeah, this is great. We don't have Santa Claus, but this is a great study. I learned something. Do you know I lost some Christian friends over this by now? We just finished the fifth series. And there are Christians who somewhere started, maybe they went two series, maybe they went, maybe they didn't get past the first one. And I kicked their God. And they're angry and gone. That's how powerful Santa Claus is. For some people saved, you don't mess with Santa Claus. That's how dangerous it is. I thank God in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, that I got out of that mess. By the way, before I was saved, I was saved 1987. April 1987. The date, I give like two or three different dates when I do my testimony. Before I was saved, I'm going to say about the 6th or 7th grade, when I found out that there was no Santa, I caught my parents in a lie. You know what this pre-evangelist did? He upset the whole school system. Because he went back the next day and told everybody there was no Santa Claus, and my mom told me that. Man, I had to, I had to school bring my parents into the school and everything. And you know what I remember saying to the principal of my mother there? Are you now going to call my mother a liar? And I realized she was lying to me all along. See, when you tell your children that there is a Santa Claus, and there is no Santa Claus, I don't care what NORAD does. To, to, listen, after the FBI changing the, the, the videotape and all that just recently happened, I don't trust the government anymore. If I had any trust in the government, I don't now. There is no Santa Claus. There is a Jesus Christ. And you, Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. You may not suffer those little children to go to Santa. You better not. When I preach on the streets, I see a woman, I see someone with children. I, I, I quickly try to go to suffer the little children to come unto me. Because you don't know who those parents are bringing those children to. And you're also stealing. You are stealing from yourself the love and the, and the emotions of that child to give it to somebody who's imaginary when you worked and earned that for those gifts. And so one day, Christian... You tell your you tell your children that there's a, there's a liar there, there's a Santa Claus, and then one day you're gonna have to tell them well there's no really no Santa Claus, and then one day you're gonna have to come up to them and say well there's Jesus Christ will sit you mean like Santa. I had a Christian friend left the two fairy and just told me you know mind my own business. It's a shame. It's a shame.